Hey, beautiful people of YouTube and the internet and all that stuff. You find me flashing the engine. I've just done a service on it, which I didn't film because, hey, everyone's seen an engine get serviced before, I'm sure. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm sure it's something that you have attempted yourself. Um, but yes, because of, I had some issues with my coolant, I have expedited replacing the radiator and running it in for a bit prior to turboing the car, which is a bit annoying, but because of a certain a house move potentially being on the horizon, um, that's what's happening. So I've just put some uh, speed flush through. Um, so it's just going to run for a bit and then um, yeah and then I'm uh, going to start taking things apart ready for the new stuff to go in but uh, just waiting for it to get up to temperature so I can start timing 10 minutes let's see we're up to temperature yet we're pretty close the cabin's nice and toasty so 10 minutes on the timer All right, because I've just engine uh, radiator flushed the car, what I've done is I've taken the thermostat out of there. I've pumped water through here. I had to wait for the block to cool, obviously. Having removed the thermostat, it means that the water will just flow through the engine and through the uh, heat system, and it will come out these two pipes here. And it's a good idea, in my opinion, to block that one off a bit so that the water will come out this one too. So. That's now pumped through, and when I remove the water pump, um, which was a long story how long it took me to get the fan off, I had to use an angle grinder in the end, it was properly seized on. But, pump the water through there, make sure it's running out clear and nice, and then uh, you can remove the housing for the uh, thermostat and the water pump, and watch the water flow out. So new metal housed water pump goes in, or metal impeller water pump goes in. So aluminium should last better than the one that blew up on me uh, six months or so ago. Moisten the O-ring, so just grab a little bit of water out. And it'll only go on one way, so let's see. Hey, look at that. And it won't wanna go in. Oh, there we go. That went in easier than I thought. Then, four 10 mil nuts go on here. So I like to keep the bucket underneath because on my driveway, if I drop a screw and it lands in the bucket, it's a lot easier to find than if I drop a screw and it's amongst the kind of gravelly tarmac. But no. I wonder if there is a torque setting for these. There probably is. Let's refer to the Haynes manual. So because mine are M8, they are 16 foot pounds, or pound foot, however you want to do it. My wife can't do this with two, with one hand, so. Now I'm going to do them diagonally just to make sure it's pressed in script before I torque it to spec. Just get them kind of nice and tight and then go. Right. I mean, these feel like they're going on a bit too tight, if I'm honest. I think this torque wrench won't really click at such a low setting. So 
we've got the Mishimoto 68 degrees thermostat, so that's going to open a lot, lot sooner. So the thermostat goes in, then the rubber seal, and then I've got a new aluminium cover for it. Now these bolts go on to 10 newton meters, but that is way too low for anyone to actually um, kind of do. So. I think we'll just do them good and tight. And you've got a weird 13 mil that goes in there. And then the rest are 10. So then the uh, belt cover goes on. Now this is hard to do one handed because of exactly what you just saw. You see, it will get to the end. And obviously these are not in a square pattern. So you do have to line the screws up with the uh, uh, water pump first but I'm gonna have to put two hands on that now to get them tight so the belt goes on like this and then it's a 16 mil nut in there which you push down on to release I'm gonna need to use a second hand here now so then fish the belt up over and onto the alternator. Let's just get it a bit better centered on the tensioner. And make sure it's on well on all the others. Feels like it's lined up nicely. Yep, it's in all the grooves. And there you go, belt back on, new belt. So there's a mess of old parts over there, except for my bench, oh, and my new parts as well, mixing it up. So here we go, the Mishimoto Moto Performance Radiator. And let's put it next to that one. Well, it's just bigger everywhere, isn't it? Wow, is this actually gonna fit in the car? Let's hope so. It's meant to. Okay, so you take the rubber stoppers and the rubber bungs out of the old radiator and put them in the new one now these because this is much wider had to be relocated you can see where that one was and where it is now but so far it's in it's secure it looks thin mind you, there's no fan on it yet and we've got to connect some bits up so that's gonna need to be rerouted, I suspect. Um, and the other bits should be a doddle. And then what goes on here? That might be, I'm gonna have to look up a video quickly, I think, and see how this is done. That might be my uh, temperature. Which I'm hoping it's not, because that's also where my turbo's going. Well, skip forward a few days. Um, I finally got the Mishimoto performance radiator with expansion tank to work. Now, it does advertise it as being a direct fit replacement, but it is not. If you have a European spec, I'm guessing, radiator with the built-in expansion tank. So, things that I needed to get extra. This hose that is basically goes to the expansion tank. It's obviously built in on the one I had, so I didn't have one of those. Um, luckily, Amazon sell them for about 10 to 15 quid. So that worked nicely. The metal housing, um, I know that Project M539 restorations will not like it, but I could not get it to not leak without using instant gasket. So I got the high heat silicon gasket for that, and now it's fine. Um, I had to get a 25 mil hose and, an, and some elbows to extend the return pipe that normally goes into the bottom of the overflow sorry of the um uh expansion tank that's built in down there on mine to go over here 
So you can just see that pipe there that I've added on so that the, um, <laughs> the radiator would actually complete a circuit. So 25 mil radiator hose, some Jubilee clips and uh, a 90 degree elbow to get that in. This, which is just a stock part, it's quite easy to find. I go on to lllparts.com, put in, um, I actually put in a US spec version of my car into their diagrams and found the part number. And then I put that into Amazon and I found that quite easily. Um, then came the electric fan. I've got the probe going in down there. You just about to see it. Oh, also because the reservoir um, gauge is now on the other side of the engine. I had to extend the cables for that. So that goes from there round to there. Now back onto the fan. The I got the electric fan, so I bypassed the uh, clutch fan. And that required the thermostat going in down there. You can just see it poking out and it works beautifully now. Um, it was quite easy kit to install actually. It came with everything. I've just now taped up and wired up all the cables. I've mounted the relay here. Behind here is a little rubber tap and I can change, take that out. There's a screw in there and I can change the temperature at which the fan comes on. And funny enough, where I've got it seems to be perfect pretty much straight away, so I've left it alone. What happens here is I've taken my switched live. Now, it does say on the Mishimoto website to take it from the stereo, but that cable is nowhere near long enough. I didn't want to keep extending cables. I didn't want to find a route through the bulkhead. I didn't want <laughs> to take my radio out again and go through all that. So... It did actually come with this handy little fuse kit, which I unplugged a fuse for a circuit that only comes on with the ignition. I put that fuse into the bottom holder. The, uh, the fuse that came with it is in the top and that came off a cable and that's where I connect my yellow cable to. And that works fine. So that is actually a nice, simple little fix. I just put a little notch in my fuse to box to allow the um cable to pass through without getting pinched and i took my um live feed from the feed that feeds the fuse box so that just goes under that goes straight to the fan then the negative or the earth from the fan comes off through the controller so effectively the fan controller controls the fan with temperature purely by operating the negative side of the circuit or the ground side of the circuit and there we go and as per usual, because it's an E36, it's a pig to bleed. I know all the um, videos online will say, jack up the front of the car, run the fan on low speed, but high heat and keep putting water in. You can do that till the cows come home. You will still have an airlock in it until you drive it. The only way I can find to actually get the air out of the heat exchanger, which appears to be higher than anything else, no matter how high you jack up the front of the car, <laughs> Um, is to just drive it um, once you've got an, once the air bubbles have stopped coming out of the reservoir you put the cap on go and drive it do some some fast pulls to pull the water back through the engine try and go up a hill and down a hill um, keep an eye on your temperature gauge don't go too far from home and then top it up again when you get home do that a couple of times and that's how you can bleed this car because it's a pig otherwise and Big shout out to Mishimoto. It wasn't as easy as it said, but that's because it wasn't a car with the external expansion tank. So it's a bit more involved if you haven't got that type of radiator in the first place. But it's in now, it works well. The heater's heating up well. The fan's kicking on when it needs to kick on. Um, and I'm gonna keep an eye on it for the next few days just to make sure it's not losing any, any fluids again. Um, but as you saw earlier on in the video or in a previous video, the compression on this car is pretty good and I'm not getting clouds of white smoke out the exhaust. And I'll tell you what, before I go too far, we'll just check the oil as well, just to make sure, having done an oil change on it just the other day, that we're not getting milky oil somewhere that we're not seeing yet.
No. No. It's looking good. So, I don't know why the old radiator lost that litre of water randomly one day. But hey ho. It does look like we might be getting a house with a garage soon. So, um, fingers crossed. I'll be doing the turbo kit as soon as we move. That's all for now. Love you, bye.